Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Um, I haven't made a video in a long while, but I'm obviously back for the beta event uh, for End of Dragons, the new expansion coming for Guild Wars 2. Um, and I'm mostly excited about the Harbinger, which is the new elite specialization for the Necromancer class. Um, and that will be the main focus of this video. I'll be talking about how this spec will fit into the current PvP scene and I'll also be talking about its overall feel. There are some timestamps in the description below. I'm going to be talking about its concept design and how it plays in PvP and the various strengths and weaknesses of the, uh, the spec. Um, but yeah, I've only really played Harbinger for around two days in ranked PvP. So these are just some first thoughts and um, I also have some gameplay from those two days which we'll be playing in the background. So I hope you guys enjoy. First off, we will be talking about the concept design of the class. Because this specialization got a pistol, it got elixirs, and it got Harbinger Shroud. Um, and Harbinger Shroud actually does not absorb damage like Necromancer or Reaper does. Uh, but now when you are outside of Shroud, your life force drains and heals you, which is a pretty interesting concept because it's very different than the other specs we've had so far. Because now when you are inside of Shroud, you're actually squishier than when you're outside of Shroud. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, this spec just feels a little bit weird in my opinion. Because with the promo video, we got promised Kung Fu, we got promised Alchemy, and also just a gunslinger all in one. But when, like the idea on paper is, is amazing, it made me really, really hyped. But in reality, I'm it just feels a little bit clunky like it just does not work conceptually for example like with reaper and holosmith holosmith like those are in my opinion like really good and complete themes for elite specializations when you're playing reaper like the great sword and the shouts and the reaper shroud they just all come together really well to make one coherent spec same for the holosmith it's really they just it's really different it's really new and everything just really works really well together but I feel like ArenaNet with the Harbinger tried to do a little bit too much because it's not really a gunslinger, it's not really an alchemist, and it's also not really kung fu. Why I don't even know why the kung fu is there, but it, they it seemed to be a kung fu type spec when in the promo video, um, but it just feels like they did try to do a little bit too much. Uh, maybe they could have just gone with just the pistol and maybe gadgets or just more an alchemy type theme, but. Right now, the Harbinger is trying to do a whole lot of everything, and I get it, but it's not working for me, in my opinion. Or maybe I'm just, I just need some getting used to the spec, um, but it just feels a tiny bit clunky. For example, the Willbender is more put together, in my opinion, than the Harbinger, because the, the Willbender has a clear, like, high agility, high mobility, monk-style gameplay. Um, and even though I've heard that the gameplay sucks and then it, it hits like a wet noodle, it's still a really nice theme, which I just don't really have with the Harbinger yet. Despite this, it's still like a really good spec and I've had fun playing it and it does well in PvP, but conceptually it feels a tiny bit weird. But let me know if you guys are also feeling this, because maybe this is a non-issue for other people, but we'll see. Secondly, the Harbinger in PvP. Um, after playing it for two days, it was pretty clear that this is definitely more of a condition damage spec. The pistol doesn't really do lots of power damage and most of the skills just work a lot better when they're specced for condition damage. For example, Harbinger Shroud number two, when you, when you um, also apply the trait for it, it applies a shit ton of uh, poison and torment and the uh, auto attack can also be specced uh, with Doomfire, which really increases its damage output. Um, so that's really nice. Um, and this is fine. Like I've also tried power Harbinger builds, which were decent, but I think that to optimally play a Harbinger, one would have to spec for condition damage. And this is a tiny bit of a shame because I never wake up in the morning and think, hey, I wanna play a condition damage build because condition damage builds just feel slower and clunkier and a bit more boring just less fast paced. Um, nonetheless, the Harbinger brings many new things to the table, which is definitely more sustain, a very decent main hand weapon, 
Um, also boon sharing when traded for it, which might be useful for high rank PvP or world versus world, gank squads or zerging. Um, and yet the most important thing which the Harbinger brought to the table is a lot more mobility. And especially this was a really welcome change, I think, for a lot of Necromancer players um, because we just have always never really had mobility. And most Necromancer builds are forced into playing um, Spectral Walk and Fleshworm just to be able to move around in, um, just to be able to move around faster um, and to juke people so that Necromancers can stay alive because they are easily focused. Moreover, I think this is also the first time that there is a Necromancer skill which evades because the number four skill in Harbinger Shroud is actually a half second evade, which is lovely, which I really, really appreciate. Um, and especially the auto attack is very nice. Uh, it's easy to spam. It does a good amount of damage. It has 900 range. Um, but yeah, again, conceptually, I don't really like the auto attack, like com compared to Reaper auto attack. And I'm like, yeah, Reaper auto attack is more, it just makes more sense, but I'm not gonna lie. The auto attack on Harbinger Shroud is still very good. Um, but there's one thing which I am missing, which is like big burst skills. There's not, I feel like the damage, like I said, it's all conditioned damage based, but it doesn't really feel like this Harbinger brings a lot of burst to the table. It's more damage over time. The number two skill could be considered a burst skill, especially when traded, but only at close range when you hit all the bolts. But yeah, that's, uh, these are just my two cents. And by the way, for those who are wondering, um, most of the clips in the background, I was using a condition damage build, which should pop up on the screen right now. Um, it uses Doomfire and the Curse's trade line to apply lots of condition damage. I also traded the number two skill to Corrupt Boons, and I did pretty well with this build. It also had a decent amount of life force regeneration, which is especially good on Harbinger because all your life force becomes healing when you are not in Shroud. Um, so yeah, I can definitely recommend this build. I had fun with it. As for the Harbinger's role, the main thing that I'm a bit worried about is that it will be fulfilling the same role that Necromancer players have always fulfilled. Um, because it brings new things to the table, but not many new things. Harbinger is definitely not a tank. We Necromancers don't have blocks, ages, evades, and good healing. Um, and while it does have more sustain, that sustain still requires you to have life force. And usually you get life force when hitting other players. So if you miss your skills, you have no life force, which means that you have no sustain. Um, the Harbinger can definitely 1v1, and it can definitely side note a bit better than core Necromancer, for example. But it just, like I said, does not have the active sustain or active damage mitigation to face off versus, for example, a Core Ranger or Hollow Smith, which are currently just very, very, very good 1v1 classes. So, in my opinion, the Harbinger is kind of stuck in the role that the Necromancer builds have always found themselves in, which is it's just going to be another damage dealer or team fighter, which probably would need a support in higher levels of PvP and World vs. World. Um, and this is fine, it's to be expected, but I do wish that maybe in hindsight ArenaNet was a bit more experimental with ways on how to play Necromancer. Um, it would have been really cool to see the Harbinger fit into other roles because right now I don't see it as anything else than what Necromancer builds have always been, which are damage dealers and team fighters. So um, my two cents on that. But yeah, the only thing which is really new and which I'm actually excited for, and I think a lot of Necromancer players would agree with, is that mobility that this spec brings. Um, it has more ways to move around than any other Necromancer specialization because it has got two mobility skills um, in Harbinger Shroud. And the good thing is also that when traded for Harbinger, you can always access your Shroud. For example, with Reaper, if you don't have Life Force, you cannot use the number two skill. But with Harbinger, that is not the case. You can always pop into Shroud and use number three, number four, and that is quite a range to jump away all of a sudden. So it's definitely a 
specialization which is harder to catch and harder to pin down um, and it's also nice that we have got two hard crowd control skills, which are the days on the number four and the three second float under number five skill. And that float is really big. It's really a good skill. Three second hard CC is absolutely insane. And it has a low cooldown as well with soul reaping. I believe it literally has a 20 second cooldown for a three second CC that is amazing. Um, and it's also really good to also get away. You can just CC someone and then run away while they're just floating there. But back to the mobility, the number four skill is really good, especially in PvP and World vs. World, because you can use it to get to um, very difficult places to get to. Since it's a ground targeted um, leap skill, um, kind of, it's basically using the animation from um, Daredevil Vault. Um, but now with a 900 range, which means that you can get to some really weird places that other specializations cannot get to so that's really nice also the number three skill is just a very nice dash um it has a very normal cooldown it implies one stack of torment which is decent i guess but yeah when combining all of this and adding flesh worm and spectra walk to the mix you you can really get around the map quite fast and you are definitely a lot harder to catch than uh, other classes As for dueling, the Harbinger fares pretty well in 1v1 situations because you have now have a leap, you have more CC, there's more sustain, there's more mobility than other Necromancer builds, I would say. Um, and it's still a relatively good damage dealer. And also, especially with the pistol, which has a vulnerability, it has torment, it also has a stun, which is another hard CC skill. So yeah, the Harbinger is pretty good at focusing targets down. And what I especially liked about the build that I was running is that um, with Path of Corruption, the number two skill in Harbinger Shroud um, was able to do an AOE boon corrupt every four seconds. Anyone who was hit by one of those bolts would have two of their boons corrupted, which was very, very nice, um, especially in team fights. So the Harbinger with good lifers regeneration, the sustain is also pretty decent. Uh, when I was at full health with a carrion amulet, so that was around 30,000 HP, I healed for around 850 health per, per second, I believe. Um, so that was really good, but the Harbinger is still a punching bag when uh, just in general, just like any Necromancer spec, it just can, is able to absorb a lot of damage, has a lot of vitality and a good sustain now but it still does not have too much active damage mitigation so it's still kind of a punching bag like necromancer and reaper moreover the auto attack in harbinger shroud as i discussed before is really good it has good sustained pressure does good damage has 900 range applies torment also does good uh, power damage so i'm really a fan of the auto attack Lastly, in outnumbered situations, I, I'm still quite a fan of Harbinger. Like I said, I think the, the, the biggest thing that it brought to the table is the sustain because with any type of life force regeneration, you will get healed for a big amount outside of Shroud. Um, so you can just like use your number three skill, number four skill, get some life force, heal up, go back into the fight. Um, and I've done that quite a bit in PvP as well, as you can see in the background. Um, and it also has like multiple CC skills with the number four and number five Harbinger Shroud skills and also Pistol 3 is an AOE stun. Um, so really, really good. But it, like I said again, it misses some burst skills. It could, it has good sustained damage, but not a lot of burst. So that could be worked on. Currently, I usually, when I played the Harbinger, I just bursted using the, the float skill and then spamming auto attack and the Harbinger Shroud number two to apply lots of torment and doomfire ticks. Uh, but that's really all I did. And then as for power harbinger, most of the things I discussed up until now have been related to how it was playing a condition harbinger. Um, but when I played a power harbinger, which I was very excited for, I tried it, but it felt a little bit clunky because the skills did not feel optimized for power damage. 
Um, the auto attack is again really good, but in reality, no one would just allow you to spam your auto attacks on them. Um, and even the number two skill with power damage, I really only crit like four, five, maybe six or seven thousand with it on squishy targets. But yeah, not too much damage. Um, and yeah, it just kind of feels like a more squishy power necromancer because you don't have a shroud and you need time to heal up again when you're in a uh, when you're in a fight so power harbinger is definitely possible but i would say it's less optimal um it really lacks good aoe power damage skills um and yeah it, it again it just has no stability and active damage mitigation which makes it hard to be a very active force in a fight um so yeah, it just felt a little bit clunky and I hope they will do something about this because previously with Path of Fire, Scourge was able to do a Power Scourge. I played Power Scourge, it worked, uh, but they nerfed that to the ground and Power Harbinger is also kind of like eh. Um, so I'm really hoping for the best and that this is a real possibility later in when the expansion comes out. Uh, but as of right now, as of this beta event, I was not really a fan of Power Harbinger. So the final rating for this class is that it's definitely a very fun class and it brings some new things to the table, which are mostly the mobility and the sustain of the specialization. However, conceptually, it just felt like ArenaNet was trying to do a little bit too much because I don't feel like a gunslinger and I also don't feel like an alchemist. I kind of just feel like core necromancer on steroids. That's how I would describe it. Um, and likewise, I just missed the new role for necromancer uh, because this, I think, is just going to be another damage dealer and team fighter, and we've already seen that from Necromancer, and I just don't see it fulfilling a niche that we don't, that we that we have. So yeah, those are my two cents. Um, but nonetheless, I think the skills look very cool, especially the Harbinger Shroud number five. Um, the elixirs, I'm not a fan of. I feel, kind of feel like they took the easy way out because. Oh, the elixirs, the elixirs just give you boons and give you blight, and that's really all they do, and I'm not a fan. Um, but yeah, it's still fun to play. I can't, like I said, I think the best way to describe this class would be neck, core necromancer on steroids, and I like it. I like it. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It's a solid pass. It's fun to play. Um, it could use a little work here and there. I really hope that Power Harbinger is a possibility when the, when the expansion uh, releases, whenever that is. Um, but yeah, it could be a tiny bit more unique from the other things we've seen on Necromancer from now on. Um, so yeah, those are my two cents. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it. There will be gameplay in the background. I think I'm going to make another gameplay because I got quite a lot of footage. So I think I'm going to make another video next week about, um, all the footage that I collected. Please let me know what you think of the Harbinger, whether you think it was fun, whether this is enough. Um, and I'm also really curious if other people also felt like the conceptually it was a bit too much because maybe maybe I'm a minority and people love the Harbinger, but I did not really get what I was supposed to feel like when playing this class. Um, but yeah, again, these are all just my opinions. I hope you have a great day and that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back later. Yeah, have a great day. Bye bye.